Visit SailRight.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. In this tutorial video, we'll be making a cushion for a seat back using the traditional box cushion approach. However, instead of having boxing that is seamed together at each corner of the cushion, we will be using a continuous boxing, which is actually easier to sew up and, in my opinion, the finished results look better. Also notice where the zipper plaque boxing starts, there is a neat little pocket for the slider to zip into. This cushion is being made for an RV dinette. This video is part of our Airstream Argosy renovation. We'll be renovating an Airstream from top to bottom, inside and out. Join us for this exciting video series. Here are the old cushions as they were. And here's a look ahead at the finished cushions for our dinette. This tutorial covers the back rest cushion. The seat bottom cushion will be included in a separate video and it will include pleats for diamond quilting. Let's get started and show you how to build this traditional box cushion with boxing that is continuous. The first step, measuring the opening. These are the old cushions on the RV and as you can see they don't even fit right. That's because they were purchased basically from a company that had them pre-made. Now how they did this is there are straps on the back side that Velcro into this and that keeps this from falling over when the RV is in motion. We're not going to do that. We're actually going to install snaps to the back of the back rest cushion and screw in snap studs here. So let's remove these cushions. And the first step of making a cushion is determining the finished size of the cushion that you want. So I'm going to measure from the wall and I'm going to have the cushion stop here at 37 and 3 quarter inches and that'll fill this gap. For this, I want the cushion to come pretty much close to this edge. So I'm going to go, go 22 and 3 quarter here so the cushion will stop right about there. That's my finished size. And the thickness of the old cushion was 5 inches and that's what I'm going to do for the seat bottom. And that's also the same for the seat back, 5 inches. Now the seat back will be the same length as the seat bottom. Okay, I have to put the seat bottom down to measure for the back. Now we're gonna have the same five inch foam. So from the seat bottom up here, I'm gonna make it a 14 inch width. That's my desired finish size. If you'd like to calculate how much materials you'll need, visit the Sarat website and click on Learn and then Fabric Calculator. There you will see multiple projects. We're gonna click on Cushions. Next, click on box cushions because that's the type we're going to make. On this first screen, we'll enter the fabric width that we're using. Ours is 54 inches wide. And if you have a vertical or a horizontal repeat, you can enter those here as well. Ours does not, so we'll hit the next screen button. Here, we'll enter for the left side 14 inches. For the front side, we'll enter 37.75 inches for our cushion, and for the thickness of foam, 5 inches. Notice that side D, the right side, is automatically filled in, assuming that it's a rectangular cushion, which most are, including E as well. And the diagonal is automatically calculated. If you have an irregular cushion, you can change those measurements. Next is boxing length. Seamed means there'll be seams at the corners of the cushion, whereas continuous will have no seams at the front two corners. It does take more fabric, but we believe it looks best. So we're going to select continuous. It's now time to add the cushion by hitting the add cushion button. The calculator will automatically scroll to the cushion that it just placed on the fabric rendering shown in gray. And we can use our mouse and click on each one of the plates to move them in a position that's great for nesting. We can do the same with the zipper plaque and the boxing. If your fabric were patterned and you want the pattern to run down the boxing, you could rotate your boxing so that it matches the pattern. 
that is not necessary with our cushion, so we're not going to do that. Notice for one cushion, we need a little less than two yards of fabric. And if you scroll back up, you can see the list of materials with the needed amount to complete that cushion. Add a cushion and it'll automatically recalculate, or delete a cushion and it'll also recalculate. We actually need two cushions, so we're going to add a cushion. No need to enter your measurements again, it keeps the same measurements you entered. If you were making a different size cushion, you would just alter the measurements above. Now we can nest those panels for optimal fabric usage. After everything is nested in the appropriate spot for the best cloth usage, you can scroll down and see exactly how many yards you'll need. We need a little more than three yards. If you select on continuous boxing, it will use more fabric, but we believe it looks better and is easier to construct that type of box cushion. Cutting foam is next. We're going to cut the foam a quarter inch larger on all sides, just as the fabric calculator says. So we are making our foam a half inch larger in both the width and the length, and when the cover is put on it, it'll be compressed slightly. So that's why I'm marking the foam a half inch bigger on those two dimensions. This is the backrest, and a backrest doesn't have to have a firm foam. In fact, a lot of times people like a medium or even a soft foam on the backrest. A backrest does not need to be a high density foam, though it can be without issue. Usually it's a medium density foam because it doesn't see much compression. We're going to be cutting the foam with two different tools. This is a serrate blade foam saw and it's by far the best tool for cutting foam. However, it's a little bit expensive. You can actually just use an electric kitchen knife like this. You can get at a uh, department store and it does cut the foam as well, but you have to be careful to make sure that you hold it straight up and down. First, we're going to demonstrate the electric uh, kitchen knife and we're going to hold it as straight as possible and cut the foam with this. Notice that I'm using the edge of a table here to try to keep that blade up against it. This is a sacrificial table. Let's talk a little more about foam from Sayerite. The higher the density of the foam, the longer it will last if used often. If the foam is not going to be used often, a medium density foam can be used. A high density foam can be soft, medium, or firm in feel. The same goes with a medium and low density foam. And there's what the cut looks like. Now see I'm a little bit off down here. So I'm going to try to straighten that out a little bit. That's the problem with using one of these. You have to be pretty diligent about keeping it against the edge of the table. So I have cleaned up that edge a little bit because I wasn't very straight. And you may say, well, that doesn't look very good, but it's not going to really matter. It's going to compress pretty nicely. You can use, there's a tool that Sarah's going to be making soon that looks like this. This is a prototype. You can use something like this and you could actually um, sand down the foam if this bothers you and this uh, actually does a pretty good job of straightening out problems like that it does make a mess so until we have one uh, that's like this from Sarah it'll probably be a different color you could actually just use a uh, cap off of a jar and punch holes in it with a nail to make this uh, similar scraper for foam the serrate blade foam saw has a base to keep the uh, cut almost perfectly vertical. Let's also discuss the features of foam regarding IFD, indentation force deflection. That has to do with how soft the foam is. How soft you want the foam is always up to the end user. Remember, you can always have a high density foam that is very soft, medium, firm, or extra firm. Remember, density will have to do with how long the foam will last if it's used often. A low density foam, if used often, will bottom out quickly. This is actually a very nice cut here, but uh, if, you, if you get something that's rather jagged, again, you can shape it nicely with this tool that is coming soon to say all right. In this chapter, we're going to be cutting the bottom and top plates to size. Okay, this is cushion underlining material. This one is rather inexpensive and you can kind of see through it, which allows the air to uh, uh, go through the fabric. This one is called Super Grip cushion underlining material. It doesn't move at all. As you can see, this stuff moves a little bit. It's a little bit tacky, 
for our application, we're putting this on top of wood and we have a trim piece beside it, so this is going to work great. This is a little bit more expensive, but if I had a really slippery surface like fiberglass, this would be the cushion underlining material I would pick. I'm using the scry ball pencil and I'm just marking the corners. We're going to make the bottom plate the exact same size as the foam. You may be asking, after the half inch seam allowance is taken up, won't it be smaller? Yes, that's intentional. Now for the any contour, I like to just trace very close to the edge of the foam. So this bottom plate and the top plate will be exactly the same shape and size as the foam. So when the half inch seam allowance is taken out, it'll compress the foam, making the cushion look great. This cushion underlining material does not need to be cut with a hot knife. It does not unravel. So we're just going to use scissors. There's no right side or wrong side to this cushion underlining material. Okay. This is going to go into a seating application, and this is the outside edge. So this is the front side of this cushion. This is the cushion on the left side. So I'm going to mark F on that, which means this back piece will go back here like that. So this is the inside surface here uh, of the back plate. This is Eversoft uh, seating vinyl. It has a really nice texture on the outside uh, and it is a four-way stretch. It stretches along the width, the length, and also obviously the bias. And the back side is just gorgeous. So this is what we're going to be using. I've turned the Eversoft upside down because I like to mark on the underside and I want inside surfaces to face each other since this is not a rectangle. It has some shape to it. So this is the inside surface as we labeled here, and this is obviously the inside surface. And so we're going to mark this and we're going to cut it out with uh, scissors as well. Now we're going to be cutting our boxing to size from the fabric. So I've got my top plate and bottom plate cut to size. They're equal sizes. They match the foam's uh, size. Here is a cushion that we finished for the right side of the dinette of the RV. And what we're going to talk about now is the boxing. As you can see, the boxing goes around this curve. There are no seams and there's really no seam at this corner e either. So we have a, a boxing piece that covers this side that has a pocket here so that the slider can zip into that pocket and be hidden. And then there's also a pocket on this side, but this pocket is actually underneath the, uh, the, the bottom edge. And the reason being is that this is exposed in the dinette. So this part, we didn't want the pocket to be up here and be visible. So that's why we buried the pocket on the underside. And over here, this pocket is against the wall, so who cares at all? So you can put that, that pocket anywhere you'd like, and we're going to show you on this one how we do that. So we're going to measure this side of the cushion, the front side, or the, in our situation, this is the top side since it's a backrest, and this side. So we're going to go all the way around it with our soft tape measure to this bottom edge, and I get uh, 64 and a half inches, and I'm going to add four inches to that because I like to have extra fabric for the length of the boxing. Now this, this foam is five inches thick. And the width of this boxing, usually what I do is I add a half inch to one of the measurements. So I'm going to cut my width of the boxing to five and a half inches for this. If I had three inches, it'd be three and a half. Two inches, it'd be two and a half. Okay, for the bottom where the zipper plaque will go, what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure this bottom edge, or this would be the back edge if it were a, a seat, and this is 38 and a half, and I'm going to add 10 inches to that. The width of the bottom zipper plaque will be uh, extra. I'm going to make it six and three quarter. The fabric calculator will actually tell you the width to cut that. We'll explain this in a little bit more depth after we cut the boxing. Going to the fabric calculator, yet again, we scroll down to the rendering, and if we move the boxing panel, we can see the exact measurements to cut it out to size. And if we move that back up again and move the zipper plaque boxing down, you can see there, too, the exact size that it needs to be cut. Now I'm using the clear acrylic ruler to cut it to five and a half inches. This is for the boxing that goes around the top and the sides. And I, th this is a nifty handle we have. It's basically a suction cup. And it makes it really easy to move your acrylic ruler around and hold it in place. 
It's not necessary, but it's kind of nice. Now a continuous strip of uh, boxing like we're doing here does use more fabric because you have to have a continuous length of uh, fabric. If you create uh, separate strips of boxing pieces, you don't use as much fabric, so you, but you do have the seams at typically the corners. So it doesn't look as good and it's a little bit harder to turn the corner. So it's your choice. You can save on fabric or you can save on labor and in my opinion make things look better by not having seams at the corner. It's your choice. This is the uh, boxing for the zipper and you can see it's cut to six and three quarter inches like we discussed. The reason we do that is um, five and a half is the other boxing uh, which is a half inch larger than the foam. So the other portion is the width of the zipper that we're using. So it is the thickness of the foam, a half inch, and then the width of the zipper. We'll grab the wider boxing piece and create the zipper black. Okay, this is our zipper plaque, and this is the boxing that goes around everywhere else. I want to take the zipper plaque, and I'm going to fold it in half and mark where the center is on the wrong side of the fabric here. I could also just measure it, too. But now what I want to do is I want to strike a line at the center position there. So I'm going to put it on there and strike a line all the way down it, and then we're going to slit it in half with scissors. Now we're going to mark a line uh, one and a quarter inches from that cut we just made on the underside of our fabric. And we're going to do that to both strips. Now on both this edge and this edge, very close to that raw edge, I'm going to put a quarter inch seam stick for canvas and upholstery. This makes applying zippers very easy. Our double-sided tape is by far better than anything out there. It is an acrylic base glue, not a rubber, so it will not yellow. Get it from Sailrite. We're going to flip these over like that. And notice the seam stick is on these two edges. And we're going to put seam stick on these two edges in the same manner like we did before. Very close to the raw edge. Now we're going to peel off the transfer paper, revealing the glue. This is the zipper. We've already cut it to the length with slightly a little bit extra on each end by about a quarter inch or so. It doesn't really matter. This is a coil zipper. You can see there are teeth on top here and on the bottom side the teeth are not exposed. Uh, we're going to separate the zipper and we're going to take one half and we're going to make sure that the teeth are facing down against the outside surface of the fabric and we're going to uh, have this ex ex extend over the edge by about a quarter inch and we're going to match it up to the edge of the vinyl being very careful not to stretch the zipper because the zipper can stretch so I am being diligent to put it on nice and neatly and we need to do that to both halves because if we stretch one side then the ends will not be even when you're done. Teeth go down, same thing. Now we're going to take this one and we're going to flip it. And I like to have it so the seam stick is facing me. I think it's easier. And we're going to peel off the seam stick on this side, the underside. And I like to start in the middle. You don't have to. And we're going to baste it to that line that we struck. So it's right on top of that line going to the left or the, or the right or the right or the left. doesn't matter which way you go. And we'll do that to the second strip as well. So we're going to take our zipper plaque, we're going to put it next to the presser feet so the teeth are not uh, on top of the press of the teeth, but right beside it. Then we're going to take our magnetic guide and we're going to put it on like this so that it's right up against the zipper's teeth. And that way I can just sew super fast and I'm not going to do any reversing because it's going to be stitched the other direction later on. And I have my machine set to uh, six millimeter straight stitch and we just sew keeping the teeth right up against the deluxe five and a half inch magnetic guide. Now these are some nip nippers from Sarit that are extremely cheap and they actually work pretty pretty well. Now here's our end result. You got a stitch nicely into the flange of the zipper 
and we have a beautiful looking zipper plaque. Now we're going to do the exact same thing to the second one. Next we'll take the slider and install it so the two ends of the vinyl are even. So I'm going to start it on this one and put, push this one on. And the ends are even here. It doesn't matter about the zipper, it matters about the vinyl. And then we're going to zip it all the way through the zipper plaque and off the other end. Why do we do that? Well, we want that slider to be in the middle and we want the two ends to be closed. Then we're going to open up this end and reinstall the slider yet again in the same manner. Then we're going to leave the slider in about that position or in the middle, it doesn't really matter. So we want the width to be equally the same or very close to the same. And I am a little bit proud here. I might actually trim this away. I'd rather have too much than too little, but I think I'm okay because I, I can be off by about an eighth inch on each end. So this is acceptable for me. To prevent a backrest cushion from falling down, we're gonna create straps with snaps. Since this is a backrest, on the back we're gonna put uh, a, a strap like this so you can snap this in place and that keeps the cushion from falling over so it doesn't do this kind of thing. It'll be snapped right into place. To do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a six inch by three inch uh, strip out of the regular seating vinyl that I'm using. So this is six inches by three inches. This is some scrap fabric. And then I'll cut it in half once I have it sewn together and that'll make two. Now it's always best to use seam stick on this or pin it in place, but I, I don't like putting pins in vinyl. Um, because it'll move around when you take it to the sewing machine and sew, and this double-sided tape just makes it so that it stays right in place. Get away, get away, get away. Go away, okay. So now I'll fold this to all, pretty much the halfway position. This is, there's no real science to this. And then I'll put seam stick here. So you just want it to be a strip that's thick enough to reinforce the snap, and yet looks good on the outside surface. So this will be my underside. So I fold it over so that this won't really show in my finished results because this will be the outside surface. You can sew this with a straight stitch but I put it in a zigzag stitch and I'm going to sew in about a four millimeter, three millimeter uh, zigzag stitch right down the middle and I won't do any reversing. We'll take this six inch strip and fold it in half which will basically make a three inch strip which is plenty for a snap and cut it with scissors. Okay so now we have this side which I really want to be the bottom side up against the, uh, the, the uh, back plate and this one. So we're going to put a hole in it right in the center. You can use any kind of hole punch. This is an eighth inch hole punch and we're going to put it right there and in this one as well. Doesn't matter if you cut your thread, so don't worry about that. Okay, we're gonna put the button on the side that has that extra fold of fabric. So right through there, we're gonna put it through the hole. We're gonna put it on our little uh, base here and put the ant, oops, we gotta put the socket on top. Put the socket on top of there, and then the anvil, and then we give it a few blows until the barrel is rolled nicely into the snap. So that snap is installed. We'll do the same thing with the second one. I'm gonna put the seam stick on the two edges like this on both pieces. Peel off the transfer paper. And we have this, the back plate here and the inside surface is facing down. We want these attached to the outside surface. And we want them attached at the top, but not too close to the top because I really don't want them to be visible. So I'm gonna, just going to randomly put it around there. And then over here, we're going to put one so that it's pretty much even with the other one here. And that should be far enough down that we can attach to something solid and yet not, not have it be visible on the back side of the cushion. I'm going to sew it with a 
zigzagging, going forward in reverse a few times, twice on each side. You can also do this with, with a straight stitch if you don't have a zigzag machine. So now I'm going to move this over a little bit to the left and do the same thing yet again, reversing and forwarding a few times. And then we'll go to this side and do the same thing. And then once we're done with this, we'll do the same thing to the other one. Next, we'll sew the boxing to the top plate. I like to sew it to the top plate rather than the bottom plate first. This is our zipper plaque and it goes to the bottom side of this back's, uh, back breast. So it would go on like this, outside say if we're just facing each other, and usually the zipper comes up over the sides and you have a pocket here and a pocket here. But I don't want that pocket to be visible on this side because remember this is exposed. So I'm gonna be moving it down to probably around there. It doesn't have to be at a specific spot. But we also need to consider what's the best way for sewing. I like to sew with the boxing on top of the plaque. It's just easier for that. So I need to think about where's the throat of the sewing machine. Well, if this is a sewing machine and this is the throat and this is where the needle is, sewing in this direction all the way around will give me the best uh, advantage to sew the boxing on top. So I want this boxing to be attached to the end of the zipper here so that it can continue on and I can make it easy for sewing. Okay, there's my regular boxing, here's my zipper plaque. My zipper is a little bit too long. I'm gonna match up the vinyl edges and I'm gonna make sure it's straight across here. And I'm gonna sew approximately a half inch from the edge going over the zipper as well and doing some reversing. I'm gonna put it in straight stitch, maximum stitch length. Here we go. Do some reversing here. We're gonna sew across the teeth and I'm gonna do a little bit of reversing there going slowly. I don't want to have my needle hit uh, anything hard and deflect. And uh, sew all the way to this edge and do some reversing here. Okay, we're done with that. Okay, we have this uh, opened up here. We have this end sewing on. I'm going to make a pocket here, and I like to make my pocket. It doesn't have to be this way, but I like to measure from the cut edge two inches over and place a mark here and that's where I'm going to have this fabric fold over to create a pocket for my zipper to slide into. So at around two, two inches there. That means over here if I've got my uh, pocket uh, or my zipper plaque already cut to size I'm going to measure over two inches here and then when we go to sew this we know exactly where we want the fold to, to happen on this side as well. Because when I'm sewing, I won't be able to see these notches or see these marks. I'm going to cut a small triangle in this going no deeper than a quarter inch. I'm actually going less because it's pretty easy to see these. There we go. Okay, so we're going to fold this right to that line over here. And we're going to make sure that it's uh, matched up to this edge because I'd rather have this tight going up and down than loose. And I'm going to sew not at a half inch, but more like a quarter inch from the edge because I don't want this stitch to show up. I'm just tacking it in place. So I'm just going to do a little bit of reversing there. That's all that's required for that. And then I'm going to um, go to this side and I'm going to do the same thing at my mark. So I'm going to fold it to that mark and I'm going to pull a little bit uh, this direction to make sure that it's closed up nicely and I'm going to sew a quarter inch at that position from the edge. There we go. Now see how what I see what I did here is I pulled this to the outer edge and it's okay if it actually goes over the edge if it's a little bit small and you got a little bit of a bubble here but that's nice because when you're done that'll help draw this close so the pocket doesn't just sag open because it's basically being pulled tight as you can see by the zipper's flange. Now if you wanted this zipper plaque zipper to be centered on the bottom side which we don't what you would do is you would take this uh, plate and you would cut a center notch with a triangle here. Let me just show that because it's kind of hard to see from there. So I'd cut a little notch here 
in the fabric. If I wanted the zipper plaque centered here, I would fold it in half and find the center and put a notch here, and then that notch would be matched up so that the zipper is centered on the back side. But for this application, instead of centering the zipper plaque so that the pockets are even on the sides, I'm going to make sure that the pocket is not visible here because this is seen. So I'm going to move it down here so this pocket's on the underside here and that's where we'll start. But to start sewing, I like to round a corner if possible, and I have plenty of fabric to make a pocket here, so I'm gonna start sewing right here. So I'm gonna walk this around, and I'm going to hold it with my finger at that location, because this will vary slightly, but it's definitely gonna be on the bottom side. So we're gonna start sewing here and sew around. Take the deluxe five and a half inch magnetic guide, place it on the needle plate a half inch from the needle. The needle plate is marked on this, the Sayrite Ultra Feed LSC sewing machine. And remember, we're gonna start sewing here. So I've got my outside surfaces are facing each other. The top plate is facing up. And we'll just start sewing approximately at this location. So I'm gonna lower the foot. And here I'm coming to a corner already. Watch what I do. I sew up to that corner, stop short, we're going to set our sewing gauge at a half inch here, boom, and then I'm going to measure from that corner and mark my fabric at that corner. Not only that, but I'm also going to cut a notch that is perpendicular to the edge going no deeper than a quarter inch at that mark location. So now I'm going to sew up to that mark and have the needle land right across from it approximately. Needle coming up slightly, lift the presser foot, rotate on the buried needle. So my assembly is going in the complete opposite direction and the boxing rotates nicely that direction. And then we'll lower our presser foot, making sure the edges are lined up as we sew and there are no wrinkles uh, in front of our needle and there are none and sew down this side. Okay, now all I need to do now is just match up the edges and keep them approximately a half inch from the uh, magnetic guide. So we already have this uh, pocket sewing in, so I'm going to sew up to this corner. I'm going to stop short. I'm going to find the corner and I'm going to mark it at a half inch right here. And then I'm going to take my nippers and I'm going to cut uh, perpendicular to that edge, going no deeper than a quarter inch right there. And I'm going to sew up to that point and my needle will stop at that point approximately. There we go, a needle going up, lift the presser foot, rotate the assembly so it goes uh, in the opposite direction pull this out so that the wrinkle goes back behind the presser foot and there's no wrinkle in front. Match up the edges, lower the presser foot, don't forget to do that otherwise your sewing machine will mess up, and sew down this leg in the same manner. Now we're coming to this arch here and that's pretty easy to do. This is a gradual arch. So what I'm going to do is just going to make sure the fabric is lined up going directly across from the needle at that arch. Um, so watch. So I'm starting to make that turn and I'm just making sure the fabric is uh, lined up at, at the magnetic guide as we turn. The edges are um, right on top of each other at that point. Nice smooth transition and now we're almost to the straightaway. And we'll just keep going around like this. We just turned the last corner and we're coming to the part where we need to join this together. So we need to stop sewing so we can join this together and create our pocket. We're going to take it out of the sewing machine. Okay, so we're going to place the zipper plaque along that edge as though it were sewing down. You can, there's our, slit, there, our mark and here's the excess boxing that we have. So remember, it's going to fold right there on that mark to create the pocket. Now it's on the wrong side, but don't be alarmed by that. We're just uh, determining how to cut it. So I'm going to pull this out so you can see it a little bit better. So if our fold's right there, then basically 
we need to cut the excess off right there. I'm, I'm going to wet this so it marks a little bit better. Okay, so that's where we need to cut off. Now I like to cut it so that it's totally perpendicular to the edge, so I'm going to use a clear acrylic ruler and uh, make sure that it's uh, a straight line like that and cut this excess off. Now if we take these two and sew it together here at the half, half inch, it will create a pocket that's perfect uh, on this side as you can see here. So we're going to sew this together right like that at a half inch. I like, because there's, there's a lot of bulk here, I like to put double sided tape on one of the boxing pieces. That way things don't move around as I'm sewing because I got to contend with all this bulk. And remember the zipper plaque was slightly bigger, um, so I'm going to offset it so that it's even on both sides and stick it down. Oops, see? See it's crooked. That's why I like using the double sided tape. There we go. Now it's perfect. I'm going to move the magnetic guide just because the zipper's extra long and I can follow the half inch on the needle plate. Doesn't have to be exactly a half inch anyway. Nobody's going to see this. Make sure you don't sew into any of your cushion. Do reversing. Go over the zipper's teeth carefully. Do reversing once on the zipper's teeth to lock them in place well. And then sew to the opposite end and do some reversing. There we go. So now that that is done, all we need to do is basically fold this. We're going to fold this excess under and it should fold to our point. And, and since we don't have a lot of uh, extra fabric here, it should come out nice. And if, it, if, you, if you have too much fabric, you can just create a fold that's deeper. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't have to be right at that mark you made. But you just want this to be nice and flat when you sew it. And remember, I like to have this pulled out a little bit, so I'm going to try to position it. There we go. That's perfect. I'm going to start sewing back on top of my previous stitches, and I don't want to sew inside the uh, finished cushion uh, because it will show up if I do. So I'm basically right on top of those stitches. I will not do any reversing um, because I'm sewing on top of those previous stitches. Okay, and all I need to do is line up the edges now and sew a half inch from the edge. We can put the magnetic guide down, but we don't need it. Once I reach these stitches, I'm going to sew right on top of them, right to the corner, and then I'm going to do some reversing just inside the flange because uh, it'll never be noticed just to lock that stitch down well. And that boxing is now installed. See how nice this corner is? It's just perfectly done because of that slit, and the end results will just make it look gorgeous. Now we'll create matchup marks in the boxing so the bottom plate is in the same alignment as the top plate. I've already cut a center notch in this and I'm actually going to use that center notch so I'm going to transfer it into the boxing here so that I can see it. And we're going to uh, move it up to this edge and to do that I like to use the clear acrylic ruler to make sure that it's perpendicular to the, to the edge. So right here is where the center notch goes here into the zipper, or into the zipper's flange, yes. So I'm going to cut a little triangle there. This notch is located in the center of the bottom side. And then I'm going to take this, this is the inside, and I'm going to fold it in half and uh, find its center. Um, creating notches like this, especially for big cushions, is important so you, you make sure that you're um, your back plate is sewing onto the boxing so it's not skewed. And then at the corners what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the fabric up so that I can find out where, the, where this matches up to here and create a fold. So I can, I'm basically looking down and, and also having it fold right at that point. And I'm going to fold each one of the corners. Now I can't do that to the curved edge because there's no corner on that. But at each one of the 90 degree corners, I can do that same thing here so we know where the corner of the back plate should fall. So we're going to do that to all these corners. To sew the bottom plate on, what I like to do is I like to start as close to this as possible 
um, so that I can sew around it and if, if I'm off I can make adjustments to this pocket. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the center here by folding this in half so that the corners are directly on top of themselves and we'll cut a little notch here. So that's the center and we'll find the center of this one by folding it in half and cutting a notch here. Now we know exactly where this should fall and we can match up that notch. Now, oh, we got to transfer this notch. I'm sorry, I forgot to do that. So I'm going to use my clear acrylic ruler and to make sure that it's parallel to that edge and transfer the mark to the outside of the boxing and cut a, a triangle there. Now we can sew the bottom plate to our fabric assembly. The outside surface of the bottom plate needs to face the inside. Okay, the notches are on top of each other. We're gonna sew a half inch from the edge and we're gonna try not to pull on one fabric more than the other as we sew. Now you've got all this balk down here. You wanna make sure you don't sew into your plate, just your boxing. Line up the edges, and we'll start sewing. Okay, I'm already coming up to a corner here. So it looks like this notch is falling at the corner, so we want to cut into the boxing, not the plate, uh, going no deeper than a quarter inch. Remember, we already have a notch there, so you don't, don't want to cut too deep into it. That'll help it to take the turn. When we reach that point, which is right about right about there, bury the needle, lift the presser foot, pivot, and push all this fabric back, and roll this around so it's 90 degrees. I'm going to push this back here so it goes back. And now don't forget to lower your foot and sew down this side. match up the edges as you go. When we get to the when we get to the center notch, we're going to make sure that they are lined up. So here you can see our center notch here, and they're not really lined up. They're off by about a quarter inch. So you can start to correct that just by pushing more on whichever one's short or pulling on whichever one is uh, short or long of each other, basically so they match up. So I'm going to pull a little bit on the vinyl and I'm going to shrink a little bit on the top plate. As long as you do it gradually, you won't see any wrinkles and uh, it'll, things will start to match up again. So we're a little bit better. Uh, we, I'm going to do it a little bit more. This is, un, this is not uncommon for cushion making. That's why matchup marks are pretty nice. So shrink up a little bit on the top or the bottom um, plate hole on the boxing a little bit. The small wrinkles that I'm pushing into the underlining will help to shrink it up. And I'm pulling a little bit more on the boxing underneath. Now hopefully that should be enough to make the difference. We'll find out when we get to the corner. Okay, so this is where our pocket is, but this is where our corner falls. And it looks like that corner is going to be in about the exact right spot. So I'm going to sew. And then I'm going to cut my little notch in this because it looks like it's going to fall a half inch or so from that edge. It's a little bit shy of it, so I'm going to cut a little bit in this direction. Okay, so now I'll sew up to that. Half inch from the, the edge of this uh, fabric. Need, bury the needle, needle coming up. Lift the foot, pivot on the needle make the turn push all this bulk in here with the buried needle it stays in position and match up the edges lower the foot make sure there's no bumps there and so okay so I'm to my last corner here and this is where we started sewing and we have a lot of bulk here but that's going to be created in our envelope so what I want to do is with my needle buried I'm at that, at that half inch mark that we've talked about. I'm going to roll this around and that was basically where I'm going to start sewing. Flip that over, that'll make it 
tuck this back so I don't have to sew through any bulk. Okay, those are matched up. I'm going to lower my foot and I've got no wrinkles there. I'm going to sew just a, a little bit into that corner and then bury my needle. Okay, so now I'm going to create this fold now that I've got around that corner. So I'm going to pull this down like that, lay it flat. Wherever it falls, it falls. I'm not concerned about my notch. I'm concerned about taking up the excess fabric without any wrinkles. That looks perfect like that. So I'm going to hold that down and I'm going to sew until I run into my previous stitches, which are right here. Now notice that that's bumped up a little bit like that. I don't think that's going to make any difference. We'll find out here in a second. So I'm into my previous stitches. I'm going to sew past them and do some reversing into the flange so it's not visible. Now let's look at that and see if we're, if we're okay. You'll notice a little bit of fabric is sticking out, but when we turn it right side out, which we're going to do next to insert the foam, it'll look great. So here's what we just finished, and it actually does look pretty good, even though this is folded up. You may be worried about that. Let's look, open it up and see if that actually looks good. Hopefully it does. So we're going to turn it right side out, and I'm just basically unzipping it so that I can turn it right side out. Okay, now we can inspect that. Let's push the corners out. So here's what our end result looks like on that side that we just finished up, and it looks great. And the corners, boy, they're awesome. Bottom corner, it looks good. All the other corners look great too. So now let's insert our foam. This is silk film. And the reason that I use it, it just makes it easy to insert the, the foam into the cover because the foam sticks to the uh, material pretty easily. So I just wrap it up and I overlap it. I don't even tape anything. And then what you can do is you can use a vacuum um, to suck the foam down. So I'm going to place the vacuum on the foam, making sure that I don't have any of the plastic in place and hold that and then turn the vacuum on. And if I have a good seal, what you'll notice is that the foam starts to compress. And you can actually compress it by hand a little bit to get it to compress on the side that the vacuum's not at. Okay, so now I'm going to insert it into the cover. Once it's in the cover and the vacuum's released, it's going to expand pretty quickly. Well, there's no air getting to it yet, so it didn't really expand very fast at all. I'm going to open it up so we get some air to it. There we go. Boom! That makes it easy to insert it into the cover. So I like the uh, foam to breathe, so I'm going to cut this away, and also this stuff gets stuck in the slider. So I'm just going to cut the excess away here so that it doesn't get in the way of the slider. The bottom of our cushion underlining material it has holes in it so it breathes out those holes pretty well. But uh, to make it to breathe a little bit more I may just push it back a little bit there. We have a zipper going all the way here so I'm going to push this in past the zipper so it doesn't get stuck in the slider like that. So I'm going to push the seam allowance down so that it's on the uh, boxing, not on the top plate. For this cushion, it looks better that way. Sometimes it looks better if the seam allowance is on the top, but I think it looks better on the side here. So I'm using my finger to push the seam allowance down the boxing side all around it. Now I can take my slider and start zipping it. And if I have something not in the right spot, I can actually kind of push the foam down. It's a nice tight fit, just like we designed it. here's the idea of the pocket. The slider goes inside 
that pocket and is not visible. That's why we made that pocket. And our cushion is done. Now the backrest, let's see how it fits. Nice. Now we still have to install those snap studs here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of chalk. You can use anything that leaves a little bit of residue. And I'm going to basically paint the stud with the chalk. Both of them. And by doing that, I can put the seat in the appropriate position and then just press on the snap location right here and over here and there you can see exactly where the stud should be installed so this is a screw stud 3 8 inch shaft nickel plated brass we're gonna put it right there and we'll put one over there in the same manner so how you snap this on, this is the reason for the tab, is you can get your finger back here. And you then all you need to do is snap it to each one of the studs. And now that cushion won't go anywhere when you're traveling. This backrest cushion is now complete. We'll also have a separate video showing how to do the seat bottom cushion with pleating. Coming up next is the materials and tools list that we use to make this seat back cushion using the traditional box cushion approach. We used a high density foam for the backrest, but a medium density foam would also have worked great for that backrest. The seating vinyl was Eversoft, which is an excellent performing vinyl for indoor or outdoor applications. If you have any questions about the materials or the tools that we used, give us a call or email us. We're glad to help. Coming soon, we will show a tutorial video on making the seat cushion with pleating. Be sure to subscribe to be notified of new videos when they become available. If you enjoyed this video, click the link in the description below or at the icon at the top right to check out other projects in the Airstream Argosy Renovation Series. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Sailrite, thanks for watching.